just felt like lighting some candles this morning. <laughs> I just love my new mantle. Today's video might be of interest to some of you. It's all about a study that was done. There's always been a study done about pretty much everything, hasn't there? Well, this study was done on how to predict how happy you'll be in your midlife and older. Hello, my friends. Well, I th just thought I'd take down my hair. I haven't really even brushed it yet to show you the result of scrunching and leaving my hair up without brushing. I've got big hair today. You know my motto, <laughs> go big or go home. I don't think I'll leave it like this, but it is nice and full. And I think I do have a shine from that castor oil, coconut oil masking that I did for two days, two nights overnight. So I'm pleased with that. We all hope that we're going to be happy as we age, but we don't know what determines it. Well, they know what it is not based on. It is not based on income or money. It is not based on collections of things that you have, material goods. It's not based on achievements that you've accomplished in your life. There was one other thing that it was not based on. What is the biggest factor determining how happy you'll be in your midlife and older. It is pretty much based on social support. That's interesting, isn't it? Now, what does that mean? You know, uh, as we grow older, our needs change, our emotional needs change, our physical needs change. And especially after we retire, many times we feel disconnected or irrelevant. I've heard many, many of those words. And especially those of you who don't have large families nearby or at all, especially those of you who might be widowed. Now, I know a lot of us have hobbies and we really dig into those hobbies. I especially love to keep busy with my hobbies and all my life I've done that. But, but I have to tell you that I also have this very large family and they are all around or at least most of them and we do see them quite often well with covid lately it hasn't been what it was and you know it it has affected me it's affected moose as well but but i'm thinking mostly about people who have not kept up with relationships from work or friends sometimes you might retire and move away and you think this will make us happy, but it doesn't always do that. In this particular study, it found that many people thought that they were very happy for a while, just doing all the things that they weren't able to do while they were working. And eventually, I, I remember this, and it has nothing to do with retiring, and, I, and that's another story. Something like that similar happened to me that I was looking forward to, and it happened to do when I was expecting my first child. This is a non tour, but it, it has to do with your thinking and how things don't always turn out the way you think it's going to be. And I was teaching at Fort Knox. Moose and I were, were Moose was in the army, and we were living there, and I was teaching third grade, and I couldn't wait. I was four months pregnant. That time they made you leave. Um, you couldn't, if you were pregnant, you, you weren't allowed to continue after, it was either four or five months. I wasn't even showing at that point. But I was so looking forward to 
doing some knitting for the baby. I wanted to make sweaters and I wanted to do all sorts of things. I wanted to garden. I wanted to paint. I wanted to do all sorts of things. And I was only, what, 23 years old. And the day came when I did retire, not wanting to, but I was, it was mandatory. And I got home and, and you know, for the first couple of weeks, oh my gosh, I knitted sweaters and I, I went crazy painting and gardening and just wearing myself out, having so much fun. And then it started to wane. And all of a sudden, I wasn't happy doing those things. I was missing my teaching. I was missing my friends. I was missing other teachers. I was missing the camaraderie that I had. And most of all, I missed all my, my children that I was teaching. So that's an example. It had nothing to do with being aging or retiring, but that, that's how our thinking goes at times. Anyway, the results of some of these studies have a lot to do with um, people, as I said, who have neglected to keep up with friendships or people that they enjoyed working with. And they found that they missed that and it affected them mentally in the way of their happiness. Yes, they were happy doing other things too, but it wasn't, it was a degree of happiness that something was missing. So the social aspect, social support has a lot to do with how happy you're going to be. And there's different degrees of happiness as you age. For instance, Moosey and I are very happy right now with our little simple life, our gardening and puttering around the cottage and Moosey loves reading, painting. I love all my hobbies, but uh, we don't see the family as much as we did. Obviously back in the day when the house was full of six kids coming and going and and they were there all the time and we were busy doing everything. We had a lot of friends too. I spent many years teaching. I spent years in real estate. I, I had a business, Romancing the Home, that I ran. And then I worked with the kids. All of, Several of the kids helped me out with that. I enjoyed meeting people then. And uh, we, we don't have that, that degree of, of social activities with other people. Now, in our case, we miss family. Um, and that's only because most of our life, we have been with family, doing things with them. COVID has a lot to do with everything. And I know, my friends, that it has put a damper on your lives as well. But in order to up that degree of happiness in your retirement years, I think there are ways, and the study suggests that there are ways that if you do not have that social support right now, that maybe you can find it. You, you know, as you age, it doesn't mean life is ending or going down. There are things you can do to, to up your happiness and up your life. So they're suggesting volunteering, volunteering in hospitals or schools, or we can get out a little bit more now. I would say you still have to be careful. People are still coming down with all sorts of things and you wanna stay well, but just even getting out uh, walking in parks or going to a mall and, um, meeting people, just strangers, chatting with strangers. I know I love to do that. But just the other day when I was at Hobby Lobby, I met a lovely woman, Wendy. Hello, Wendy. In case you're, you're watching, we were in the fabric department and she and I had a, a something in common. We both loved blue fabrics and blue dishes on the walls and we got to chatting and she's a new friend of mine. So that, that I encourage you to do that. I enjoyed that little meeting of someone new. Now, I might never see Wendy again, but, but that's, that was a day of fun for me. So as Moosey says, stay on point, Mergy. And that's what I'm gonna do now. 
So the study suggests, and it's not rocket science, as I always say, there are four or five things that you can do if you don't already have this circle of social support. Join a club of some sort. You can go out, take some free painting lessons. In your community, there's lots of things you can do. If your church has clubs, join one of those. There's all kinds of clubs. There's community things where you can go and take um, knitting lessons. In fact, I think many communities put out brochures on things to do. What they also suggest, and I have written this down, get involved, volunteering work, of course, I always promote that, volunteer in hospitals, in schools. There are children that love to be read to by mature people. Charity, there's so many charity organizations. And as you're involved in these things, you're not only doing wonderful things for people who need you, you're also enjoying and making new friends and these people can become your support system. The other thing that you might do is get on the phone or email old friends that you haven't seen in a while. They would love to hear from you. Stay in contact with your family and that's important. This study uh, gave an example of someone who had pretty much just let friendships and co-worker friends, family just lapse. And uh, they put out a question that said, who would you call if you needed someone? Who would you call? How many people in your life do you have that you could rely on to help you out either with a ride somewhere or to just talk with you? How many people in your life do you have that you could count on? So think about that. I, I have a rabbit hole story. I haven't told one in a while. But back in the late 80s, early 90s, and I think I've mentioned this before, I had a business called Romancing the Home. And it was a retail sh store. We also had a national catalog that we sold uh, linens and laces and bed linens and curtains. It was that time when life was slower. We called it um, gentler living. And people were really into back in the day type of decor. Uh, we sold beautiful white lace dresses. It, it was fun and antiques, by the way. And after we left this cute little antique shop in Brea, we had an old building that we rented and um, they redid Brea. They made, they knocked down streets of buildings. We moved into a mall and we had to keep mall hours. That wasn't as much fun because we wanted to do other things and the children, even Mikey was involved in helping me. We had to keep the shop open, but, but, there was a woman who stopped in one day and it was shortly after we opened. Her name was Ruth and Ruth came in and my two daughters and a daughter-in-law were with me at the time helping with the shop and she was a, a lovely woman and I would say Ruth was probably in her late 70s, a, a pretty woman. And, and gentle and she just loved our shop because it was laces hanging all over the place and you just had a good cozy feeling when you were in there. And of course, being the gabbers that we are, we chatted away. Well, it was obvious that Ruth wanted to stay in the shop, but she couldn't buy anything. She couldn't afford anything and that, and that was fine with us. And after a while, she even said that. She said, you know, I feel so at home here as if it's almost visiting a friend, but I, I can't afford to buy anything. And we told her that was fine to stop in whenever she wanted to stay a while with us. And I think we even had a little 
tea room in the back. Well, I know we did in the other shop, but I don't think now that I think of it, we weren't allowed to serve anything anyway. Not that we would charge, but uh, we, we didn't have a tea room going at that time in the mall. Well, as it turned out, Ruth stopped in almost every single day. And my daughters and I always dressed in lacy dresses or dresses or things with lace collars. Obviously, a lot of these things we sold. And Ruth started dressing. She would wear big straw hats and white gloves. And she started to dress the way that she felt she wanted to do when she came to our shop. And we thought that was so cute. The good part about it all was that we loved helping Ruth. We knew that we were giving Ruth some happiness. I could tell by what we chatted with her that she really didn't have anyone close by. And we now were part of Ruth's support her social support. And oh boy, did that make us feel good. In fact, we, we looked forward to Ruth's visit every day. And many the time, especially if no one was in there, we could, we had little chairs, we could sit down and talk with her. We learned a lot about Ruth. She had a family at one time, but they all lived very far away. And she was a very gentle lady and, and she, her personality just came out when she was in our shop with us. And that's just an example of a, a woman who found her social support in a retail shop with people who were willing to give it to her. Anyway, that's just a little rabbit hole star. But all of us still remember Ruth, beautiful Ruth. Um, we we did eventually close the business because we we had a home up in the mountains and at Christmas time the whole family would go up. We planned to spend Christmas up there, but I had to stay keeping the shop open at Christmas. It was a busy time, but um, it was a fun point in our lives, and I was doing this with my family, so it was fun. But anyway, so the gist of all this, and we'll close with this, is. Think about your life. Think about how happy you are. And can you improve your happiness at this stage in your life, if you are midlife or older, by enlarging your social support of some kind or revisiting some of the friends or perhaps family that you haven't been in touch with lately? Let me know. I, I'd be interested to, to hear about that. I wish that we saw more people, but I do know that they are there. Thank God we are blessed that if we needed any of them, they could be here in a minute. So, so we're so blessed, but I still wish that I saw them more often. I think it would up my happiness even more. Well, I want to thank you so much for being here with us today. And I want you to think about your future happiness. If you're in your 50s or 60s and you're about to retire, think about your support, social support, and make sure that you don't leave anyone behind. Bring them along with you because as you age, you might not think you might need people, but you will. You will need someone in your life. And it's important to stay close to those family and friends that you have now. Or if you don't have anyone, go out and make some friends with some of those suggestions. I hope you all had a very nice weekend and we're looking forward to some grandkids' birthdays this coming weekend. And of course, we have a wedding coming up. I have some sewing to do. And I'm going to show you my outfit that I think I'm 
going to be wearing to the wedding. Hope, I hope my mind doesn't change. But I hope that you enjoy the next few days when we'll see you again. Thank you so much for your comments. I'm enjoying every single one of them. Welcome to everyone new. And until our next video, I love you. God bless us all. Thank you.